What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and V-Ray tutorial for you. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about how to export a rendering from the extension animator into V-Ray so that you can render animations. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is a model that I downloaded from the 3D Warehouse and model credit is going to be the 2008 Ford Shelby Mustang um, from Jordy. So you can search for this and find it on the 3D Warehouse and you can bring it into your model. And so what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about the workflow for kind of bringing this in and um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Animator. I'm more going to talk about that on my other channel um, about SketchUp and this one I want to talk about some of the things that I did in order to kind of get this set up to create an animation. And so the very first thing that I did, and you can see I've already made some of these changes, is I've come in here and I've actually applied different materials to my model. So, and not only have I applied different materials to my model, I also use the quick settings in order to apply some kind of material presets to the, some of these things as well. So like for example, um, on this exterior white color right here, and it shows up as dark red for some reason, it's not named properly, but I've gone in and I've set that as a plastic material. You could also set it as a car paint material. Um, if I was to sample like uh, my wheel material right here, I don't know if it's going to let me get it without going inside that group. So let's go ahead and do that. So this material number two that's been applied to the wheel, I've made that a metal color. So that'll make the light kind of reflect off of it in a certain way. Um, basically all I did is I just went through and I just picked out the materials that were kind of going to make sense. Um, and um, so things like plastic, metal, glass. I just applied these material presets out of my quick settings. Now you could get in there and actually get way more detailed with these and find your own materials or create your own materials. In this case, for the sake of what we're doing here, um, this ought to work for this demonstration. And so if I was to go in and I was to do a quick render of this, so if we did like an interactive render, you're going to see that I'm getting light reflecting off the back of this car and uh, the materials generally acting the way that they should. For some reason, the light isn't quite reflecting off of the glass in the windshield the way that I would like it to. Um, but again, this video is more about the uh, animation itself. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of go with this. So this is generally what this is going to look like. And the other thing I want to note is I've used a uh, V-Ray dome light with an HDRI applied to it in order to uh, adjust the lighting in here. So if I was to go back and do this with just the V-Ray sunlight, you can see how this looks really different. You don't get those same reflections. So in this case, the dome light that I used, I came in here and I just used the SketchUp lights or the, I used the V-Ray lights toolbar and I just clicked on the button for dome light and I just dropped a dome light in here. And then once I drop the dome light in here, then it shows up in my uh, SketchUp asset or in my V-Ray asset editor. You can see how my dome light is right here. So the HDR file that I'm using is one that I downloaded from polygon.com. Uh, I think it's the Studio Car Fluorescent Blaze. And so that's just an HDR file that'll light your model. So you can download this. And then uh, what you do is when you bring your um, dome light in, you just click on this and then you click on the folder and you just link to wherever that, or you just upload basically the image that you're using. So in this case, I'm using a fluorescent blaze 01 HDR. And so the other thing I want to point out is I've adjusted the intensity up and I've also adjusted the exposure of my camera. So in this case, I've set the intensity of this light to a 60. And then I've adjusted my exposure down to a 13. I think it was at 14.26 initially. So if I go to that, you can see how this is a little bit dimmer. But if I adjust my exposure up a little bit, it's a lot brighter. So that's what my lighting settings are for this video. And then the other thing you could do, and it's kind of up to you, is first of all, I have a ground plane and I have a texture applied to that. But right now I have the background showing over in my settings. So if you wanted to, you could come in here, you can turn that background off so that you don't have this kind of bright background going on. So that's kind of the baseline for what I'm doing in this rendering. There's, there's more you could do to kind of clean it up and dress it up. But in this case, that's kind of where I'm coming from. 
And so now, let's go ahead and take a look at our settings in Animator. And so I've made a video on my other channel about my settings in Animator, but just high level, I have three movements in here. So if I was to click and drag along here, you can see how three things are happening right now when my car moves. So I have a translation applied to the car, so I have the car moving this way. And then I also have two rotations set up as well. And those rotations are making the tires rotate. So you can see how as my car goes, the tires are also rotating along with this. And uh, like I said, I will link to a video on my other channel about how I actually created the animation. Or I will link to a video on my other channel about creating a moving car animation. But generally that's how this is set up. And it's about a five second long video. And if I click the play button, you can see how my car is just gonna drive out of the frame. So that's all that this is doing. And so I have my animation set up and I have my rendering materials and my lighting set up. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna export our video. So to start off, I'm gonna save my model. And now we wanna go over to this little button right here, which is generate a video for the film. And so in the newest version, and note that I am in SketchUp 2018 and I have the newest version of Fredo's animation extension. So I think I think the version you have to have um, above version one point. You have to have version one point seven C of Animator and LibFredo um, seven point seven C or above. And this provides support for V-Ray. And so when this provides support for V-Ray, what this is going to do is you can see how now I have an option in here to export to V-Ray. And one thing to note is right now I have options in here to export to the different MOV or MP4 files. In this case, I want to export to an MP4, but um, that's only going to show up if you have the FFMPEG plugin, and there should be instructions in here on how to install that, but that needs to be installed so this can be made as a video instead of a sequence of images. You can see all I have to do is click on the button for V-Ray in order for this to work. And so the first thing you can do is you can click in here and you can type a test or you can click on test image but you can see how this isn't really working and the reason this isn't really working is because right now my v-ray if I was to go in and look at my renderer settings is set to interactive well obviously an interactive render never stops it just keeps going in the background so your test image isn't gonna work so I'm gonna click stop image and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change my V-Ray settings so that my rendering isn't set as interactive anymore now it's set as now it's set as just a regular render and so one thing I found is the little test image button is supposed to pop up a preview of your image but it doesn't really work for some reason so um, for whatever reason that's not working so instead you just need to come in here and click on your vendor render with v-ray option and just let it run a test render and make sure that it kind of looks the way that you want it to look and it's doing what you want and notice however long this takes that's how long every single frame that this renders is going to take so you can see how this is kind of overriding my settings where I had this set as something smaller so this is coming in here and this is taking a while and if you want to create a really high size high quality rendering you can definitely do that but in this case what I want to do is I actually want to reduce the size within animator so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna set my dimensions instead of something like 1576 by 936 I'm gonna set my dimensions to something like 800 and then I'll set this to about 450 and now I'm gonna run my test render again So you can see how this comes in here and this renders my car. And for the sake of this exercise, I don't necessarily want this to take quite so long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my quality down to draft, just so this video exports really quickly. So you can see how when it does this, I may do uh, maybe low instead of draft. So this image looks a little bit better, but I don't want this to take 45 seconds per frame when this is gonna generate 126 frames. Um, but you can definitely do that. You can change those quality settings. But basically this looks the way that I want it to look. So really all you need to take out of this is you just want this to, uh, you want your preview render to show up the size that you're looking for. 
and uh, so you can also come in here and you can adjust your frame rate so note that when you adjust your frame rate what that's going to do is that's going to render additional frames or less frames per second and so that's more or less things that V-Ray has to render so just note that in this case if you look at this this is basically going to render 126 different images and then stitch them into a video so once you have everything kind of set up the way that you want, you have your settings set up, note that your settings are basically just transferring over into Animator. So whatever your V-Ray is set at, that's what this is gonna um, basically generate at. You can also adjust the name. So we can call this car animation. And then all you have to do is just click the button for generate video. And note that when you do this, this is gonna go through and this is gonna render basically every single frame. So you can see how this is going to take a little while with my current settings. So I'm just going to kind of let this run in the background and then we'll come back when this is done rendering everything and take a look at what our final animation looks like. So you'll notice that within Animator this will give you kind of a progress bar of uh, basically how far in you are and uh, how much longer it's going to be. Alright, so it looks like our video is finally done so we can go in and take a look. So you can either click this button right here in order to just play your video or you can click on open folder and it'll open the folder where your files were created. And so in this case I'm going to open up my mp4 file and you can see how I've got this nice image of this car driving across my screen. And then from here you could really extend things, you could do this with a little higher you could do this with a little higher quality or you could make your video longer but this gives you a pretty good idea of what you can do with V-Ray and Animator pretty quickly and pretty easily. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Is this something that's useful to you? Are you going to start creating animations using Animator and V-Ray? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, Always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.